Yeah, but doesn't it feel inevitable? Uh-huh. Bring it Don't out. Don't the Warriors just feel inevitable? I mean, it's just like, yeah, it's 3 0, and, you know, the Mavs are going to go quietly, and they can make it a series, and yada, yada, yada. But it just feels like. And, and really, Michael, we've been talking about this all season with the hot start that they got off to. Well, once Clay yeah. Thompson comes back, watch out. And then who saw Jordan Poole becoming arguably the most improved player in the league this year? And now they grab in the power stone and, and, and punch in Luka Doncic. And that power stone being Andrew Wiggins, the second leading scorer in this series for the Golden State Warriors. It's like they just have so many options. They have different gears. We saw it in the Memphis series the way they closed out pesky Memphis. We've seen it in this series where they once again overcame a 15 point plus deficit. They just have a different gear. They have different tools in their bag that they can go to that nobody else can. They outscoring uh, the, 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 uh, the Mavs by, by 10 points in the third quarter in this series. They've, they've won at least one road game and 26 straight series an NBA record. They've won nine straight conference finals games. Michael, I can go on and on and on, but it just seems like here we are on the brink of exactly where we thought we would be despite how many teams we tried to anoint as next in the Western Conference. Where did that bring us back to Golden State? Yeah, it's so fun. It's fun to watch. That's the word I want to use with these Golden State Warriors. Yeah, we thought we'd see it, Mike, but we didn't think we'd see it like this. And I'll start off with Andrew Wiggins, who everybody was talking about off the top when we just played that sound. Now, Andrew Wiggins was supposed to be this going way back, way back to the Kansas days. In that draft, it was Wiggins and it was Jabari Parker and it was Joel Embiid. And it was going to be, hey, this guy, this guy Wiggins is going to be the next thing. And he just so happened, uh, he was on his way to Cleveland. And then LeBron James came back to Cleveland. So he winds up going from Cleveland, us and Nasty Dunk, uh, winds up going from Cleveland to Minnesota. And that's what Draymond Green was referencing. Why don't he just say Minnesota? Just why don't he just say, look, he, he went to a loser organization historically, and that kind of threw him off his path. We can't judge him based on what happened in Minnesota because a lot of people have been derailed by Minnesota. He didn't say that, but I'll say it for him. Andrew Wiggins is finally becoming the guy that we thought he might become eight years ago. It's been a long time, seven, eight years ago uh, when he came out of college. Look, uh, I, I think he's got he's got great athletic ability. As Steve Kerr said, he's a two way player and now he's playing with players who know what they're doing. Who's got who've got championship pedigrees and he's rising to the occasion. I'm happy for him and then I'm happy for some other parts in the team. You already mentioned Jordan Poole. It's just like a different. It's a championship team that the core is essentially the same, but the uh, the outer rings have changed and the outer rings are fascinating. Jordan Poole Wiggins really stand out as those, and they got some young guys who are going to be there when the, when the champ when the dynasty continues. They got Watch some young guys it. who are going to be who are going to be major players hey, in the I'll, next couple I'll, of years. I'll, I, I'll, talk, I'll throw you talking a, about you Kaminga. I'll throw you a fastball down the middle in a second, but I do want to say this about Wiggins. No, he's not the guy we thought he was going to be coming out of Kansas because because the number one overall pick is not a role player. But the beauty of what we're seeing is that he doesn't have to be a generational player with these Golden State Warriors. Now, granted, he's only had two single digit games in these playoffs. And like I mentioned, he's been the second leading scorer for the Warriors in this in this particular series. But and he's an all star. He can. He's, he's an, an all star starter. He's an all star starter. <laughs> and he finished Luka Doncic last night. But no, I'm saying like he doesn't have to be the second coming of Scottie Pippen or whoever we thought he was going to be coming out of Kansas when he was drafted by Cleveland and LeBron decided he wasn't trying to wait for his development. He can be a guy that doesn't have to carry a scoring load, but just has to concentrate on locking in Luka. Or he can be a guy that you don't see coming scoring wise. But to your point about the Wiggins of the world, who still got some years left, depending on how long he stays in Golden State. But whether it's Kaminga, whether it's Moses Moody, whether it's Poole, whether it's the uh, injured at the moment, uh, Gary Payton the second, they still have gotten nothing next to nothing from Jonathan Wiseman. So it's reminiscent. I hope this isn't going too far because I know none of these players, I recognize that none of these players we just mentioned 
have ever been expected to be or maybe even could have been what the name I'm about to I'm about to what did I say? I didn't say James Wiseman. What did I say? I said Jonathan Wiseman. Oh, all right. Well, y'all know oh, what okay. I was talking oh, about. Hey, John. Hey, Wiseman. Wiseman. Okay. I said, I said Wiseman. next to nothing okay. from Wiseman. Y'all know what I was talking about. For, uh, tongue, tongue lap. Sorry. Anyway, um, what was I saying? Oh, none uh, of these the people. Name you're are, about to are, say. None of these people. Yeah. The name I'm about to say. None of these people were supposed to be this guy, but it's reminiscent of the Celtics. This is what I was saying. A fastball down the middle for you. The Celtics when they were going to get Len Bias. And Len Bias was going to extend this dynasty. That 80s dynasty was going to go into the next generation. Rest in peace to Len Bias. You understand what I'm saying? Like right. the Warriors, we yeah, saw that yeah. first iteration of them in, 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 you know, 2015, 2016, so on and so forth. And Kevin Durant came and, and they were as unstoppable a group as we've ever seen for a couple of years. And they got hurt, both Durant and Klay Thompson. And Toronto knocked them off. And they had this interruption the last couple of years with injuries. Um, to Steph and to Clay and to Draymond for that matter. And now here they are reimagined, rebooted, and retooled with guys that could take them into the future. Similar, again, none of them is Lynn Bias, but similar yeah, yeah, right. to how the Celtics were, or even we saw the Spurs more recently do it, you know, with, with Kawhi Leonard, extend that, 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 that Tim Duncan dynasty for another iteration. You understand what I'm saying? So it's like here they are. Oh yeah, definitely. And here and, and they're and they're definitely. gonna be here for a while longer. So all those teams that had designs on taking the Western Conference from the Warriors, you know, if you didn't if you didn't strike in those two years when they were down, you might not be able to get to them for a while. Look, I, I think Sorry, it's a great Memphis. analogy. No, I, I think it's a great analogy, and this is what happens when people are perennially in the lottery and they really are just out there picking in the dark. There's really no organizational vision for them. And then there are teams that don't really belong in the lottery. They just kind of stop by there. They're looking around. They're like, oh, y'all here every year. Now, this is just temporary for us. We just we just fell on hard times uh, unexpectedly. Uh, we'll be out of here. Y you won't be seeing us again. Same thing happened with the Celtics. The Celtics, it wasn't because they fall. They fell off. Red Auerbach made a great trade. Gerald Henderson to Seattle. Seattle had the number two pick number two pick Lynn Bias. And we know the tragedy of Lynn Bias, but here it are here it is with Golden State. They had some injuries and they fell into the lottery. Number two pick again. They come Number up with James pick, Wiseman. James Wiseman. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, James Wiseman. Who, who knows what and, he's gonna be? And I, I tell you the other thing is, hey, Golden State is Golden State is an example of many things of of keeping a championship team together and, and knowing how to re, uh, reimagine and rebuild around them. One, uh, knowing how to make smart draft choices, two, and then three. Uh, this is one of my staples. Make trades with organizations that don't, that aren't smart. Trade with that. Trade with with this unwise organizations. It's usually going to work out for you. When they made, I, I, listen, God is my witness, and a couple of my students are, are, are witnesses. When they traded for Andrew Wiggins, I said, man, what a smart deal. They had D'Angelo Russell, who really wasn't a fit for them. Uh, and they, they flip D'Angelo Russell for Andrew Wiggins and they get a lottery pick out of it. Like, who turned are into you kidding Kaminga. me? Who turned yeah. into Kaminga. Said, but wait, but wait a second. Here, here's a little, here's a slight bone I got to pick with you. And I know the Timberwolves. Okay, let's do it. Historically have not been, a, you know, a, a, a wise organization. I get it. But it's almost like a cart horse chicken egg type thing. Because okay. is it that the, the smarter organization is trading with the yep. less smart organization or yes or the player the player involved like I mentioned earlier is going to a situation where not that he's been traded number one the expectations of him being franchise savior are gone. I mean you mentioned D'Angelo Russell D'Angelo Russell in the Lakers versus D'Angelo Russell with the Nets and then the Timberwolves and then the Warriors and then the Timberwolves is a different conversation. So I'm saying for Wig, I think it's a, it's a, it's, it speaks to the Warriors and their culture that they're able to take a bet. What was at the time, mm. uh, albatross of a contract, and it was so bad that the lottery pick got thrown in, as you just mentioned, that that turned into Jonathan Kaminga. Um, Unprotected lottery. And pick. you're right, but okay, well, all right, yeah, you're right. And okay, <laughs> right, I, let's, let's, not, let's not look at the facts. Get away of a good story, but no, but again, okay. they make they they look Wiggins looks better with the Warriors because he's with the Warriors is what I'm saying. You know, it, like okay. he doesn't have to do the same thing that he was asked to do as a number one overall pick and a, and a, and a sidekick at the time to Carl Anthony Towns. He could be their fifth best player 
on most nights he is their fifth best player, if not lower, right. in Golden State. And nobody expects there's no pressure on him in Golden State. You understand what I'm saying? So I don't I don't know yeah, if you're gonna say as dumb it. as Golden State is so the answer, just their culture brings out the best in people. Okay, here it is. Here it is. Here's my answer. Yes. <laughs> yeah, the all of the above. Yes. All of the above. To both of them. To both of them. They are stupid. They are stupid. And that's why they've been in the playoffs twice in the last 19, 18 years. Well. Okay. That, that, that's one. Okay. And then two, yes, Golden State had the vision to say, yeah, we'll take Andrew. Oh, you're gonna make Andrew Wiggins available? Bring him into our culture. The way we're gonna use him, it's gonna right. work out just fine. Good for them. Right. I didn't think the series. You know, I thought Golden State would win the series. I didn't think they win it this season. Well, you know what else is crazy is like, you know, we even talk about Kevon Looney. We've had two games that have happened since we last talked. We even talk about Kevon Looney. You know, it's like they're getting contributions. They're so deep. They're 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 as deep as they've ever been right now, um, and versatile. And they win in such a variety of ways. And they just tease you. They play too much. Sometimes they play too much at the, to their own detriment. Other times, it's like, oh, we got him. We got him about to steal this one. And bam, off they go. Hey, thanks for watching, brother, from another on YouTube. Make sure you hit subscribe before you leave. And be sure to watch us 3 to 5 p.m. Eastern time on Peacock. Appreciate you.